1927, yeah. you know, no microphones, right? It's a silent movie. Um, th- there are serious limitations in what can be done. And as, as a result, they have to create this, um, this art f- form that, frankly, isn't realistic. And that's very interesting to me. I'm, I'm not very, I don't, I'm really not interested in watching uh, perfect reproductions of human interactions on camera. Like I can, I can go do that with actual people. You know, I don't, I don't need to see that. So I like the fact that this is highly stylized and is sp- specific to the medium. You know, I, I don't really want to watch a method actor exact, act exactly the way people do normally. I can go see that. It's not interesting to me. Uh, but but the fact that this thing is its own peculiar art form and unsullied by it le- unsullied by really method acting uh, pleases <laughs> yeah. me. <laughs> I'm 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 very much with you. I uh, this is one of the reasons why I've I've so much enjoyed the silent films that we've watched on this podcast is because uh, there's there's an acting style on display that um, you can see the sort of connective threads to to the theater a little more explicitly. And James is a theater actor. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's something that nowadays, like those distinctions are a little bit blurred. Theaters have become more intimate and the expectation of like a naturalistic performance is more, you know, present among audiences. But, you know, like for instance, when, um, when, uh, theater's father, uh, Joe, Jaw. J O H. I say yo. Yo. <laughs> uh, the, the master of Metropolis, when he's looking up at the rooftop of this cathedral at, at his son, um, and he throws his, his hands up on right. his head and falls to his knees, you know, like this is such a powerful, such an evocative, right. um, you know, not just gesture, but then picture that it creates. Um, yeah. and, and this is, uh, uh, a, a vocabulary that's so much missing from contemporary cinema. Not that not that contemporary cinema hasn't found its own vocabulary to work with that that is powerful in some ways. But I, I'm really drawn to this, and I, I hunger for it, and I'm so happy to find it again in these these older silent films. Yeah, that that sort of I don't know what we'll call it. This acting vocabulary that they use, like you said, it, you know, it, it seems melodramatic now, and it seems like overacting, and it seems corny. Um, but I was watching this and uh, and realizing that we still have in in modern acting we still have these sort of ch- acting tropes. You know, w- one of them that I would used to see on television that used to drive me nuts, and now I don't watch television anymore, so I, it's probably still there. Is you'd watch Friends, and these girls would crawl up on the couch with this cup of coffee, and they would hold the <laughs> coffee like this, and they'd have their feet up under them on the couch, and they would. And, and they were just, they were acting out coziness, you know, and, and you see it on commercials, you see it on television shows. Oh, and it's, a, and it's not just like a coffee mug you put a couple fingers in and drink out of like a human. It's like a big tureen of coffee. And they, you know, so we, we still have these stupid acting tropes. And in a hundred years, Jennifer Aniston sipping her coffee at Central Park is going to look absolutely retarded. And that pleases me. So I, 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 I like the... I like the acting vernacular or trope or whatever here better because I've got some distance from it. I think maybe that maybe that helps. Now, uh, as a watcher, uh, if if you and the audience are going to go watch this thing, it's it, it might be a little off putting. You, you're going to have to figure out how to deal with this because you don't have the vocabulary. You understand Jennifer Aniston. You don't understand Brigitte Helm. I think she was 17 years old. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, she was very young. I got to go look this up while we talk. But a lot of what she's doing, I, like I have, a, I have a scene up on my screen right now that I'm looking. I was just rewatching bits of the movie this morning. A lot of what they're doing is setting a, a scene. They're making yes. something beautiful for you to look at rather than acting like normal people would look. So the scene that I have, uh, I'm on her IMDb page right now. It's where she's ringing the bell to call all the, the uh-huh. drowning children at the end. She's hanging from the rope. Well, not that bell. This is the the one in the the machine bell. In oh the, yes, in the when she's pushing square. the lever but, over. Yes. And I'm just looking like at it, and you have the angle of the whatever you call it, the clapper on the bell, and then her pulling. She's leaned over. She's pulling it, and she's leaned back. And you have the other angles, and and the pedestal it's on is in all oblique angles, but the oblique angles are mirrored in the shadows, in the background on the 
this undersea, mm. underworld city that they live in. And the kid is pointing out, and it's all the angles are consonant. It's like Fritz said, I want it to look like this. I don't care if normal people would ever do this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, another great example is when we're first introduced to the workers. Um, yeah. You know, and, and the sort of choreography of their gestures as they're working and pulling these levers on the machine, you know, totally stylized, yeah. but totally evocative. You know, I'm able yeah. to understand something about their condition. Which is uh, that the machine is operating them, essentially. Because yes. it doesn't make any logical sense at all, like that that would be how you would operate a machine. It's a completely ridiculous Well, because, like, because most industrial work is disembodied and ridiculous and you just do one little piece of it and you have no vision yeah. of what the entirety of the right. the industrial task is you're just like pulling a lever pushing a button pulling a lever pushing a button you have no idea chevy impala comes out down at the end of the line you're just pulling the lever pushing the button yeah yeah uh, when so I... it needed to be disembodied that work that they were doing the way the movie starts uh it shows the scenes of this um this enormous city. It's like uh, Blade Runner with better lighting. <laughs> and, but then it goes to scenes of machines. And I, I kind of want to know what, where did he go to get all of these pistons? What is he filming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just that beautiful montage. Machinery. Yeah. yeah. That montage is incredible. Um, you know, not just in the way that uh, he, he frames off these pistons and cuts among them, but then in the way that they're collaged together and they kind of blend into each other, you know, yeah. and they fade in, fade oh, out. Yeah. I it, love the montage in this film. Yeah. Um, so Carl, just really, had you seen this before watching it for this? Uh, I had seen bits and pieces of it. Okay. This was James and my first viewing of the film. Um, so what you guys were just saying about like the, the shapes and, and actors fitting in with a larger environment, that is a big part of this expressionist movement. So um, uh, the, we, we've watched one of these before. We watched Nosferatu recently on the podcast. And you Creepy. know we were kind of saying at the time, you know, I don't really see how this fits in with expressionism. I'd read a little bit about it because, you know, it said like the sets would be at crazy angles, the, the buildings would be distorted and stuff. That wasn't so much the case in that film. But one thing that they do do that is typical, ex typical of expressionism and you find in this film is where the focus is not so much on the individual actor, but on the composition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the scene. Which means since you can't have a perfect composition all the time, the actors are effectively like moving from like – like one more like less complete composition to a complete composition and then like holding in place for a minute maybe um but also yeah mimicking the shape of the so you you brought up the lever scene mimic, mimicking mimicking the shape of things in the set um and you see this kind of thing quite a bit uh in this film and then another bit of it which you also discussed is the acting style so it's not just that this is a silent film although obviously this is more typical of silent film than it is of contemporary films this kind of um very emo uh, exaggerated emotion and also mm -hmm. the 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 form of movement uh tending to be kind of jerky and almost dance-like and choreographed mm -hmm. as with um you know, the workers at the beginning kind of like shuffling in to the elevator. And uh, and also, I think especially to me, the, the character that conveys expressionist acting more than anyone else is uh, the the machine man. 